Hello, welcome to Mastering and Guidelines in Ultrasound and Echo. Answer to questions. The question 15. The following Doppler has been taken from middle hepatic vein. What is the most probably diagnosis? It is a normal Doppler. So there is severe tricuspid stenosis or severe tricuspid regurgitation or pulmonary hypertension. Let's for answer to this question uh, with detail. First, we have to know what is the normal pattern of the hepatic vein Doppler. As we know, for getting hepatic Doppler, we, we can go subcostal or intercostal, transverse like this top image or sagittal and find one of the hepatic vein that can get parallel to the cursor and we put uh, sample volume and uh, almost proximal of the hepatic vein and we hit the pathway Doppler and we get the spectral. The spectral of hepatic vein is reflect and correspond to changes of right atrial pressure. Let's see how. With the starting systolic tricuspid valve, this is right ventricular and tricuspid valve, with systolic uh, right ventricular contraction in start and pressure inside of right ventricular increased. In that way, tricuspid closed. But up to the time that pressure goes higher than pulmonary valve uh, over the pressure on the pulmonary artery and it can cause uh, opening of the pulmonary valve, the pressure goes high and it causes bulging tricuspid valve toward the right atrium. In this way, right atrial pressure increased and finally the blood uh, goes to the SVC and IVC and at the end middle hepatic uh, or hepatic vein. And uh, as we know, the probe is top and so when the blood goes toward the transducel, we will get a positive deflection that corresponds with the QRS as you see on the EKG and on the Doppler. So this is positive small deflection, we call it C, that corresponds with the closing tricuspid valve. As maybe you notice, at this time, both valve tricuspid and pulmonary artery is clo are closed, so it is exactly correspond with the IVCT or isovolumetric contraction time of right ventricular. At the end of the IVCT, with continuing right ventricular contraction, it causes uh, pulling the right atrial toward the apex, so it creates some negative pressure on right atrial and it causes sucking blood from the hepatic vein toward IVC and right atrium. So blood goes uh, away, away from the transducel and it creates a negative shift on Doppler that we call it S because it is a result of right ventricular contraction or systolic time. After systolic phase, relaxation or diastolic start. In diastolic, tricuspid valve open and the blood rapidly drain to the right ventricular, from right atrium to the right ventricular. In that way, again, there is increasing a negative pressure inside of the right atrium and blood sucked from the uh, sucked from the uh, hepatic vein to the right atrium and we will see the second negative uh, deflection or shift on the Doppler. We call it D because this is on diastole. At the end of the diastole, close to the end of the diastole, right after P wave, uh, atrium start contraction. Contraction of right atrium cause increasing pressure inside of the right atrium and it force all direction 
to the S SVC right ventricular and IVC and finally to hepatic vein. So the blood goes backward again and it, since it's toward the transducer, it gives us the last positive deflection. We called it A because of atrial contraction. And this cycle repeat every this pattern repeat every cycle of the cardiac activity. In many cases, many patients maybe you will not see the C wave, or you will see an extra wave. We called it V here. At the end of the systole, we will see a positive shift. Positive shift. We called it V or systolic reverse. This part is correspond to the isovolumetric relaxation time. At this time, the right ventricular uh, kicking uh, right atrial, in that case, for a fraction of the moment, the pressure on the right atrium increased and blood go backward to the hepatic vein and so it gives us a positive shift on the spectral. Maybe in, most, maybe in many cases you will see it or you, you won't see it. That is normal. A normal uh, hepatic vein Doppler has W shape as we saw it here. W shape with the a, a uh, very obvious and clear. S is taller than D. S is taller than D and this is a normal pattern of the hepatic vein Doppler. Now let's see in pathology what happened. Let's start with the A wave. As A represents atrial contraction, so when we have atrial fibrillation, we lose a, we will not see any more A. In other cases, that there is resistant blood toward the right ventricular. So any situation that there is resistant blood goes from right atrium to the right ventricular, we will have a prominent A wave. What those are situations like uh, tricuspid stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, or pulmonary hypertension. In all those cases, the compliance of the right ventricular decreased, and so pressure on the inside of the right atrium during atrial contraction increased more. So in that case, the blood goes stronger backward to the right hepatic vein and A become prominent. In other side, on liver disease, on liver disease, the compliance of the liver decreased. So when the compliance of liver decreased, the blood cannot go backward to the hepatic vein very easy. So A wave start decreasing or even lose we lose the atrial wave. Those no situations like chronic hepatitis, liver, fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, or portal hypertension. Or in some cases, not common, uh, but curious syndrome. Uh, like for example, there is a, a significant uh, stenosis uh, on the IVC proximal uh, consequence as blood clot or metastase, so that we call it uh, Bacchieri syndrome. In those cases, we lose uh, A decreased severely or we lose completely A way. Another, part, another component of the uh, hepatic vein Doppler is S that corresponds with systolic. Uh, systolic of the right ventricular, systolic phase of right ventricular. So anytime that we have this function of the right ventricular, like the congestive heart failure, for any reason, this S way decreased. The S way decreased, as you see here in this case, S wave is smaller than D and A is more prominent. So 
we have some kind of the here uh, right ventricular dysfunction in this case now i like here exp uh, explain some important things labeling on the hepatic vein doppler because there's a little differences among the different society for example in gastroenterology society any deflection count as a phase for in this uh, top uh, doppler we have one deflection positive and two negative deflection so we have they called it triphasic here we have two deflection even in one direction almost always is negative but there is because there is two deflection they called it biphasic like this two doppler and this one monophasic it doesn't change and is flat but always negative but in uh, vascular society the point is a little different in the vascular whenever there is a blood direction change we take it as a one phase for example in this uh, extremity r3 doppler we have in each cycle we have three different blood flow in one time is forward positive shift forward then negative backward and then positive forward too so in other words if you put in this vessel that we got it this doppler put color doppler and freeze it and cine loop you will notice in each uh, cardiac cycle we will see first a prominent red and then change to the blue or negative shift and again small red at the color doppler so we called it triphasic and this one that is belong to the internal carotid artery in vascular we name it monophasic because even deflection the velocity during a cycle change but the blood flow is always forward so this is monophasic but if we take as description in gastroenterologist this is one deflection two deflection and three so this is they have to call it triphasic but it's not right this is monophasic just keep it in your mind when you read any lecture or you are going to speak among uh, people you have to know who are audience now let's go uh, to the our question for reading hepatic doppler first you have to correspond each way with the ekg as we see here we have qrs complex and so QR complex T up to, from here to here, this is systolic phase. So the correspond wave is S and the other one is D. So we have one biphasic Doppler on the hepatic vein. Whenever they go back here on systolic, if you remember on systolic phase, the blood goes from right atrium to the right ventricular but when we have severe tr or tricuspid degradation blood goes against the going goes inside of the right atrium so in this way s not only disappear but become positive become positive in this case whenever we have s positive s almost always you have this indicated of the severe tr okay when we have severe tr it means the tr v max or velocity maximum of tr is always about three meter per second as we know based on the bernoulli equation for this three meter per second v max the pressure gradient become four multiple tricopic tricopic and so it become over 36 only tr pressure gradient and if we take it the uh, right atrial pressure only even five the minimum it become over 40 so any pressure over 35 to 40 is pulmonary hypertension 
based on the formula pulmonary artery systolic pressure is equal to right atrial pressure plus tricuspid regurgitation pressure gradient but there is a point this formula work only and only we don't have RVOT obstruction or pulmonary stenosis if we have any of those this pulmonary cannot be applied for measuring pulmonary artery systolic pressure based on the TR velocity so in, that is the reason if uh, you want to give correct answer 100% the patient has severe TR but 90-95% patient has pulmonary hypertension too only and only the patient doesn't have RVOT uh, obstruction or PS so that is the reason whenever uh, you see some finding pulmonary hypertension before you label it as a pulmonary hypertension go check RVOT and pulmonary valve in PSAX and subcostal long axis and short axis and make sure uh, there isn't any of those condition if you like this lecture and you think it is it was helpful please give me a favor and share it and give us feedback up to next time have a wonderful time